Don't stop. Yeah, come on, make it hot. Keep pushing. Hey, don't stop. Hey, hold. Yeah. about this story. Here's a story of a lovely lady who was bringing up three very lovely girls. All of them had hair of gold like their mother, the youngest one in curls. It's a story of a man named Brady who was busy with three boys of his own. They were four men living all together yet they were all Burgers, soy bars, tofu, a grocery bag mix up. Here's ours. Mm -hmm. For tomorrow's lunches, and last but not least. Oh, Alice, that one's ours, all right. Yes, indeed. Oh, Peter, Tiger didn't leave that on the lawn, did he? No, Mom. I've been working on my school science project. I'm helping. It's a volcano. Study now, planets are formed. It erupts in everything. Did Rachel, Jenny, or Gretchen call? No, no, and no. No girl ever calls you. Every call is for Marsha. Jan, are you working on your science project too? I was going to start. You put it off, didn't you, Jan? I couldn't go to the store because my bike tires were flat. Because you didn't pump them up. Well, even if I did make the butterfly habitat, all the caterpillars die. Because you forgot to put the air holes in the box. <sighs> I just give up. I'm such an idiot. <laughs> Isn't this a wonderful day? For you, maybe. It's always wonderful for you. Oh, Jim, don't be bitter. It makes you even more unattractive. I just got a call from Stuhl. I got named editor of the Stuhl newspaper. Valedictorian, Miss Santa Monica, and got voted head cheerleader again. Darn it. Marcia, what's the matter? I wasn't unanimous. <laughs> I'm gonna find out who voted for Kim Semler if it's the last thing I do. It's okay, honey. Hi, everybody. Sorry to late. Bobby. 
What happened? You're a mess. I found a lottery ticket. Well, your clothes are filthy. Mom, I don't have to worry about these clothes anymore. With my lottery ticket, I'll be able to buy great all new clothes. Maybe even from Penny. Where did you find a lottery ticket? Hi, gang. I'm home. Hi, honey. Hi, Hi guys. Hi. Well, I was chasing Danny's kitten through an old dangerous warehouse. While I was there, I found this wallet. And in it was a lottery ticket. So it's mine. Finders keepers. Uh, do you know how many lottery tickets are sold? Millions. With that ticket, you'd have just as good a chance of winning the lottery as you would have of winning the lottery. Your father's right. But... Hi, but, honey. But, but, but... But, but... Just hold your butts there, Bob. The lottery ticket isn't yours. It belongs to the person who owns this wallet. But, Dad, there's no ID. Well, it doesn't matter, Greg. Bob, you were right for trying to help a little girl find her kitten, but you were wrong for going into a dangerous place. But you were right for bringing out the kitten, even though you were wrong for claiming the lottery ticket was yours, even though you were right in turning it over to me. So, all things considered, you were right, but in the wrong way, so the wallet is rightfully, wrongfully not yours, right? Gee, Dad, I never thought about it like that. while I pin on these patterns. Ow! Well, if you'd stand still, you wouldn't get stuck. But every time I breathe, it hurts. What should I do? Stop breathing. Ow! Ian, quiet! And now here's Morton with the winning numbers. Now pull out your lottery tickets. The jackpot is worth $67 million. Then here they are. This is it. Seven, eight, 32, 46, 23, and 11. Quite the dancer. Let's go upstairs and I'll show you that the fox can still truck. Mm. 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 My, we have to be quiet. I'll bet the kids are asleep. Mm. Mm. I'll take that, Beth. Would somebody please tell us exactly what is going on? Get a new car? No sweat. Go all the way. Make it a Plymouth Valiant. Groovy. Bobby, we've always been close. Enough said, Pete. You can have a new hockey stick. Heck, maybe your own NHL franchise. Wow! And Jan, you can get some new glasses, new braces, some industrial strength breath mints, and um... Okay, okay, okay. And Marsha, is there anything you want? I want to get Kim Semler for voting against me for head cheerleader. Just hold on a second there, young man. In spite of what you want, that ticket still doesn't belong to you. It belongs to the person who bought it. Right, Carol? Well, the couch could stand to be reupholstered. Your father's right. Darn it. The best things in life are free. But you can give them to the birds and bees. I do Calm down. 
We've all been so caught up in lottery fever, we didn't notice that whoever bought this ticket put his or her phone number on the back. What a stroke of luck. That is good news. And Bobby, once the rightful owner of this ticket gets his... Or her. ...money, he or she will probably give you a reward. Maybe even a new horn for your bikes, huh? Won't that be great? That stinks. Bobby is the ST one. But it does, Ma. Well, often doing the right thing does smell bad, Bobby. Hello. Yes, I'll wait. They answered, it's music. Oh. I have a choice of a hot young blonde or a very agile black woman. Well, <clears throat> though the phone number is obviously not that of the owner of the ticket, whoever wrote down that 900 number is the winner. Your father's right. You saw the same newspaper ad? Sure did. Found. Winning lottery ticket worth $67 million. Heck. That's you, sir. What did I write on the back? Uh, well, uh, I wrote my dog's name on the back. Sparky. <laughs> I'm sorry. Thanks for stopping by. Give our best to Sparky. Oh, wait, hey, hey, no, wait. It, it was, it was Prince, right? Uh, no, wait, wait. I know it was something else. It was some. Ah, uh, uh, it was King. I remember now. It was King. It wasn't King either. Oh, so good. Well, that's the last of them. It was me! Now, calm down, everybody. We still have to find out who really owns this ticket. Aww. Hello? Hello? You folks the loons who are trying to give away $67 million. Yeah, that's also right. What do you write on the back? Uh, no, no, I'm from KLOP News. Perfect. Now we can reach even more people. The country is still reacting to the surprising news that Vice President Marshall Ross has decided not to seek re-election as President Randolph's running mate. Vice President Ross has accepted a position as president of Fox Studios at five times the salary, where he feels he can have more of an impact. Now, Dottie, what's the update on the unfolding lottery story? Well, Morton, as we all know, the winning lottery ticket was found and turned over by these incredibly honest citizens, the Brains. If anyone can identify what's written on the back of the lottery ticket with the numbers 7, 8, 32, 46, 23, and 11. 11. Please contact the Brains. 11. I'm Dottie Finsterwald with KLO. That's my ticket. Back to you, I'm, I'm rich. It's time, I'm, Jim. I'm rich. Not now. Yes, <laughs> now. But you don't understand. <laughs> I wrote the 900 number on the back of the ticket. It's me. I'm the lucky one. Not the Brady. It's me. I'm rich. Yes, sir. We can't find the owner. I know. You're as upset as I am. Bobby isn't 18 and old enough to cash in the ticket, and we could be stuck with all that money. And what kind of lesson would that teach the kids? Well, that's true. Hey, wait a second. I know exactly what to do. You do? And now we take you to Washington, where Speaker of the House Sal Astor is introducing the president. It is my happy privilege to introduce not only my best pal, but the nation's best pal, a true man of the people, an American patriot, and a national treasure. Let's give it up for the best president this country has ever had, Lawrence Randolph. Thank you, Sal. Thank you. Well, as president, it is not often that I get a chance to recognize a family 
who so selflessly donate $67 million to a home for homeless architects and their families. You know, we can all learn from these good, honest citizens. The Bradys, come on up here. Come on. It was their young son, Bobby, who actually discovered the winning lottery ticket. And Bobby, your mom and dad thought that you might just like this as a token of appreciation from a grateful nation. Thank you, Mr. President. I know just where to put this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mr. Brady, maybe you'd like to say a few words. <clears throat> as a wise man once said, Doing the right thing is always easier when you're doing the right thing and doing it for the right reasons. I've often found that we tend to go astray when the wrong reasons are presented as the right reasons, when in our hearts we know they're just not right. I've uh, never thought of it quite like that. So by providing a home for homeless architects, instead of spending their time foraging for food, these downtrodden architects will be able to use that time to design homes for other homeless people. Thank you. Mr. President. Mr. President. Mr. President. Mr. President. Mr. President. What about the allegation that you have made a deal to sell a protected marine environment to Crude Co. for future drilling? Now, these waters are the home to the endangered giant shovelhead stickleback, and any drilling might cause their extinction. I categorically deny knowing anything about Crude Co. or their nefarious plans for oil rigs. I have never even been to the site. This is the truth, or I shall resign the office of the president. Uh, Mr. President, have you decided on a new running mate for the upcoming election? This is what we've been waiting for. It's got to be you. The search team is hard at work. Excuse but me, in sir. light of the preponderance of recent scandals, isn't the prospect of finding a running mate in Washington with an unblemished and honest record nearly impossible? Well, there must be a completely honest person somewhere. Someone who has never done anything even remotely questionable and whose moral fiber is beyond reproach. Let's face it, people like Mike Brady are hard to find. Why not Mike? Yeah, yeah. Why not Dan? Yeah. Why not Dan? Yeah. Why, yeah. 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 Why not Mike Brady? Yeah. Why not Mike Brady? Why not Mike Brady? This can't be happening. This just in, ABS has projected the winners, incumbent President Randolph and his running mate, Mike Brady. Apparently, the result was decided in favor of Randolph and Brady, thanks to a heretofore untapped coalition of former Boy Scouts, disco music lovers, and polyester enthusiasts. It is my happy privilege to introduce a true man of the people, an American patriot, and a natural pleasure, a, nat a national treasure. <clears throat> Let's give it up for the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of the United States. I didn't do well. I didn't screw it up. Ladies and gentlemen and friends, it is my profound responsibility to administer the swearing in of the President of the United States, President Randolph. After me. I, Lawrence Ivor Randolph, do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the office of the President of the United States. And I will, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. So help me God. I, Lawrence Ivor Randolph, do solemnly swear to faithfully execute. Thank you.
I categorically deny knowing anything about crude coal or their nefarious plans for oil rigs. I have never even been to the site. This is the truth, or I shall resign the office of the presidency. Pardon me. Pardon me. Mr. Brady. Repeat after me. I, Michael Paul Thomas Brady, do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the office of the President of the United States. Okay. And uh, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. So help me God. You bet. <laughs> This is the last of the stuff we'll need. I canceled the paper. Sam said he bought the plants, Mrs. Brady. Oh, good, Alice. Thanks. He set the timer for the lights. Uh-huh. What about the mail? Oh, I put a vacation hold on it. For four years? Ah. Uh -uh. For eight. <laughs> Come on, kids. Time to go. <laughs> You know what's amazing? After living here all these years, that's the first time that's ever happened. I would just like to welcome you personally to the White House. Thank you. Mm. 
And if there's anything I can do for you, anything at all that you need, please don't hesitate to get in touch with me and Veronica. Just remember, Veronica.web. I'm Gregory. Gregory Kevin Brady. Oh. Well, nobody told me that the president had a son who was a college graduate. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, Veronica. I'm still in high school. I just seem mature. Oh, and you admit it. <laughs> oh, how honest. <laughs> I find honesty a very attractive quality in a man. Oh, really? Well, sometimes I stuff a pair of socks down the front of my pants, and sometimes I make arm farts at the dinner table and blame it on my sisters. Oh. You're so charming. Well, I will see you later. Wow. Who was that? Veronica. Dot Webb. She's neat. Come on, kids. Everybody upstairs. <laughs> Every child dreams of one day growing up to be president. Now hmm. that I'm here, the honor, the responsibilities, the opportunities are awe-inspiring. Carol, our lives may very well change. You could be right, Mike. So, Mr. President, uh, you want to check out the art in the White House? Well, Mrs. First Lady, mm -hmm. I guess I could examine a bust or two. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Mr. President, I'm Winslow Clark. You're chief of staff. I'll be with you at all times. At all times? That's right, ma'am. Here's today's schedule. I see. Meeting with the cabinet, Senate leadership committee, uh -huh. Uh -huh. state dinner. Uh -huh. Wait a minute. This doesn't leave me any time to take out the trash. Oh, there are people to do that for you, sir. Hey, this may not be so bad. So you girls have all chosen the blue room? We can always have it painted over. Oh. Well, let me get that, Marsha. No, no. Let her do it. Mm. Uh, if you need anything, we'll be right outside. Mm. I want the bed near the mirror. Well, I want the bed near the dresser. I want the bed near this picture. Who is it? Mildred Fillmore? Jan, put on your glasses. It's Millard Fillmore. I think he was a president. They named a president after your junior high? Kitty, carry I'll better move. This is the perfect place for all my beauty supply. Jan, there's not nearly enough room, but it is the perfect place for all my awards. First place, diving. First place, debate. Second place, figure skating. Second place. That witch Kim Semler did the triple axel and the judges bought it. Oh, I'll get her. Maybe I can even get the FBI to help. Kitty, carry on, Dr. Kim's mother! What are you doing? I have water! No! 17 other bedrooms in the White House. Why are they all in one room? Hey, who are these guys? That's John Adams. This is John Quincy Adams. Oh! The Adams family. This is Andrew Jackson. No, take this Jackson down. We got a Jackson 5 poster. This is so cool. This is Abraham Lincoln's bed. Can you believe it? Abraham Lincoln. Well, this is probably really old. Wow. Yeah, I hope they changed the sheets. The chicks are going to dig this. Hey, what's this? That's Camp David. Presidents and their families get to go there. Oh, and go camping? Presidents don't go camping, dum-dum. Camp David is the presidential retreat. That looks neat. I hope Dad has to retreat soon. Mr. President? Uh, Mr. President? Mr. President? Sorry, I just can't get used to that. 
Can't you call me Mike? No. Mr. President, the Speaker of the House, Sal Astor's here. Good, send him in. I could use a hand with these pictures. Mr. President, how are you? I just was in the neighborhood. I thought I'd drop by and to pay my respects. Thanks. Sure. Can you tell me if this picture is straight? It's fine. You know, I was thinking that since you got propelled into this office by that little <laughs> incident, you probably haven't had much of a chance to think about who you'd like to select as a vice president. Maybe a little to the left. What so, do you no, think? no, no. The vice president has to be lockstep with the president. You go to the left, they think you're a liberal. <laughs> I mean the picture. Oh, I was thinking they're a beautiful family. Aren't they wonderful? That's fine. Right See, there. <clears throat> what I was thinking that... I guess that you and I think, think alike about most things, and I'm someone that could serve in any capacity, someone that you should consider coming to for any advice. Oh. All right. So, where do you think I should put my picture of Aunt Jenny? What's up? We have been told that you have to approve the menu for each evening. Mm. No Cheetos, no Skippy peanut butter, no cherry jello, not even any hamburger helper? No, 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 and definitely not. Escargots O'Reilly at Oaks Crappies. Is that food or a skin condition? <laughs> There are other choices, but... Well, I better get to the market right away, then. Oh, while I'm gone, take a look at these recipes. This is what the Brady's like for dinner. But these recipes are all for different kinds of meatloaf. Well, you can't eat the same kind of meatloaf every night, can you? Big day, huh, sweetheart? You can say that again, honey. It's not every day you become president of a whole country. My, something struck me as we drove across it. America's gotten messy. I didn't notice. You were driving. I looked around. I saw litter in the streets, graffiti on the buildings. America should pick up its socks and clean up its room. Yeah, speaking of chores, I have a lot to do tomorrow. Mm. I have to drive carpool, then sign Peter up for junior hockey, then select a vice president of the United States. What about me? No, oh, you sleep in. I'll drive carpool. <laughs> Not about that, silly. You may never have thought about it before. But you know, I could be vice president of the United States. Well, why take that on? You could clean up America as first lady. Oh, but Mike, I could do so much more as vice president. Messiness is just a symptom. If people are messy, they don't take pride in themselves. They lack self-esteem. With you as president and me as vice president, we could do something about this. Well, that's true, but... Is this because I'm a woman? You know, Marsha joined the Frontier Scouts. Well, no doubt you do a good job as vice president, but... My. Why don't I put it under consideration? Good. Why don't you put this under consideration? Good evening, members of Congress, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Chief Justice, and the rest of the Supreme Court. After serious, careful considerations, taking into account all the ramifications, I have chosen as the next Vice President of the United States, the Honorable, and may I say, adorable, Carol Brady from Santa Monica, California. 90403. No, really. <laughs> Honey, come on up. Hi, everybody. <laughs> I know most of you don't know Carol as well as I do. Well, I certainly hope not. 
<laughs> but let me tell you something. This is one wonderful woman, and if that's not reason enough, perhaps you'd like to know just why she is qualified to hold the second highest office in the land. First and most important, she's a great wife and mother. And listen very carefully to this one. Our housekeeper is not an illegal alien. Hi, Alice. Go ahead, stand up. Now, some of you may think that I chose Carol because I happen to be married to her. Now, I'd have chosen her even if we were just living together. Although, being a Brady, that would be unthinkable. All in favor? Mr. President, uh, with all due respect, uh, you can't just vote. The Office of Vice Presidency has very real duties and a mountain of responsibilities, and, well, I, for one, would have to be convinced that your wife is up to it. My? I'll let my wife respond in her own unique fashion. The dream we share together all her people truly free, every man and woman equal as we pass through history. Keep her sky in blue forever as her glory we embrace and dedicate ourselves to the journey that we face. From Atlantic to Pacific, from the south up to the north, the song of America will always echo forth. And singing from the heartland, the people raise their voice. America, my home, I sing and I rejoice. Celebrate the times that make her great. America, America. of Carol Brady as vice president by a narrow party line vote, President Brady seems to be adjusting to Washington. Make that Washington has been adjusting to the Bradys. The White House lawn now has a slip and slide. President Brady has installed pay phones to teach the government a lesson in cooperation and thriftiness. And did any of us believe there would come a day when the official presidential dinnerware would be unbreakable? And that the official Christmas tree would be artificial? Not too fast now, Bobby. 
So we can really go to Camp David this weekend? Looking good. Wow! Mr. President. Mr. President. What is it, Winslow? Should we declare southern Wyoming a disaster area after the tornadoes? Well, with the damage over six billion, we better do it now. Mr. President, about the proposal to offer federal support to rural schools. Francis, let's hold off on that until we see the next national reading scores. Okay? Good point. Your reaction on scores in the national fitness test? Well, Johnny, they're down a full percent since last quarter's report, so not good enough. The new $2 coins have caught on in the test market. But Daniel, they're only up 3% since last month. Not good enough. Will you sign my homework? Not good enough. Oh, Mike. I'm so glad you're here. The rainforest again? Oh, I only wish it was that simple. Oh, no. You mean... That's exactly what I mean. Because once we give our approval, there is absolutely no going back. I know, Mike. I just hope we're making the right decision. Well, I hope so, too, honey. Marcia? Yes, you may have your slumber party. Oh, neat! <laughs> Thanks, Dad. You're welcome. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> now I can invite all my new friends. <laughs> the national budget, Mr. President. Looks good to me. Sure. There you go, Winslow. Thank you, sir. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Did you see uh, that? Marcia's really excited about that slumber party. Not that. What? President just signed a budget that you've been working on for six months. I know, it's great, isn't it? Is so, that right? What? He can't just sign it like he would sign a report card. No, it's fine. I think he talked to the Secretary of Treasury and the Budget Committee. I'm okay with it. No, I, I no, mean, no. I, well, he I, should struggle with it. Veto a couple of things. Right. Make I, it difficult, because uh, that is what presidents do. Well, you don't what, what? Get out. He didn't even take all the credit. He is up to here with integrity. What is he doing in the highest office in the land? I don't know. You should be president. What? Yes. No, no. I'm sorry. Yes, Veronica. you. And I should be right there by your side telling you exactly what to do. Because we both know how much you love it when I tell you exactly what to do. <laughs> I think it's our patriotic duty to get rid of this guy and his whole damn bunch. Gets to have a slumber party. Janet, all those new girlfriends of Marsha's are coming over. They'll see her at Sunny Zins. They'll make fun of your split ends. They'll laugh at your sing song voice. What should I do? You know, Jan, I wasn't exactly the best looking guy in town either. Abraham Lincoln, you can hear me? I can hear you. Little lady, a lot of confused people in the White House talk to portraits. Ulysses S. Grant talked to my picture. Hillary Clinton talked to Eleanor Roosevelt. <laughs> Nixon talked to everybody. You go to that slumber party. Don't listen to him. Don't go to the slumber party. You'll just embarrass yourself like you always do. Face it, Jan. You're you. I know. But what can I do? Jan, you gotta make the best of who you are. See this big, ugly, disgusting mole on my cheek? I just call it a beauty mark. Did you hear? Marcia gets to have her slumber party. Yeah, I heard. Some of Marcia's new friends are far out. All those dumb girls will be giggling just like dumb girls. And they'll take over the whole East Wing. Get the ball, get the ball, quick! You know, this is a portrait of uh, Benjamin Franklin. Of course, he wasn't president, but he was one of the founding fathers of our country, and he deserves his place of honor. This is one of my favorite pieces. Given to us by Mao Say Tung, we have as a priceless, priceless Ming vase. Oh, no, no, no. Get the ball. What priceless Ming vase? Uh, let's move along before we get blamed. Okay, let's go. Come on, everybody out. Mom always said, "Don't play ball in the White House." You're in for it now, Pete. If they ever find out about this, they'll never let me go to Camp David. Wow, 
neato stuff up here. Look, some wooden teeth. President Ford's golf club. And an old tape recorder. Hmm. Socks and Buddy. Look, it's an old address book with lots of women's names in it. This better hold. It looks great. Nobody will notice. I sure hope not. Mike, you can't seat Senator Thurbright next to Howard Katanga. Katanga is a black radical, and the senator doesn't like people of that color. Those two don't even like to be in the same state together. Uh, don't worry, Carol. Nothing brings people together better than Alice's cooking. You <laughs> like him? You think he'd make a good president? I think he's absolutely right for the uh, country. You know, he's going to redesign the White House. <laughs> You're kidding. You think they can take a look at this? Is this a done deal? The President Architect's rendering. You like him? You think he'll make it? All right, take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Ladies and gentlemen, the President and Vice President slash First Lady of the United States, Mike and Carol Graham. Wonderful kids. I'm so proud of all of you. I just hope she remembers that if she ever finds out about the prices Ming Vay. No problem, as long as we have a few more hours to let it dry. I was so glad my mom said you could come to dinner tonight that I had her seat you next to me. So, tell me about yourself. Well, I plan on getting into politics. My father's in the Senate, and my mother's in the House. You know, Graham, we have a lot in common. Before my mother became vice president, she stayed in the house, too. We'd like to welcome all you various and sundry dignitaries here tonight. Right, honey? That's right, Mike. Mr. President, Mike. Recently, there's been a lot of talk about this administration's desire to remodel the White House. Vice President Brady reminded me how long we've kept our old station wagon. There is some value in tradition. So. That's why we've decided not to go ahead with our plans. And in keeping with tradition, please notice the centerpieces on each of your tables. The roses are from the White House garden, and the vases are from the White House's own collection. You don't think No that. way, that's a priceless Ming vase given by Mao Zedong. For example, Zedong. on that table there is a priceless Ming vase given to the White House by Mao Zedong. That's right. Well, have a nice dinner, everyone. So, Marsha. What do you think of the two-party system? Well, if someone can drive you to both parties, then I guess it's okay. I mean the Democratic and Republican parties, actually. They're the biggest. <laughs> well, then I'm sure I'll be invited. Could you please pass the white bread? Cracker. Tell me about it. It's a saltine with Skippy peanut butter. My mom used to fix those for me after I cut school. So long as there are peanuts involved. Personally, I'm a crunchy peanut butter man myself. I like the smooth. But there's something to be said about the crunchy. Don't suppose you ever had a peanut butter and banana sandwich. Now that's something. I, I love that. Woo! My mama used to make me those before I went to sleep. Mom, Mama did too. Oh, you come on, you playing with me now? Oh, I do declare. You playing with me now? No, I'm I know you playing with me now. The truth. Oh my gosh, oh. that is wild. You ever like um stick like the peanut butter on the dog's nose and watch him lick it? Oh yeah. Hey, hey look, you know what? I'm so glad the president hooked me up next to my new buddy. I'd like to make a toast to the president. 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 I hope you've all enjoyed your Twinkies a la Alice. And now, 
Alice has one more treat for you. Alice? Honor your partner, and corner is a grand. Now all join hands and away to the west. When you're halfway around, here's what you do. Dominate, hold two by two. Now swing her high and swing her low and follow up to the don't be done. Priceless Ming vase is leaking. Well, how could that happen? Once again, don't be dope. Give a White House yippee yi yo Woohoo! Oh. Sorry about that, Pete. I know you really wanted to go to Camp David. More than pork chops and applesauce. Are you sure these specs are right? Meteors the size of minivans are peppering Mars. I don't think we can afford to land Trailblazer 1 until the activity diminishes. Do we all agree? Yes, Mr. Dad, can I talk to you? It's kind of important. Sure, Greg. Dad, I have a confession. I broke the priceless Ming vase. Well, thank you for your honesty, son. But you know the priceless Ming vase did drench assorted dignitaries. I won't do it again. You will have to be punished. I know. Furthermore, clean up your room. America will take money away from the prison reform system. You prefer to spend more money on jail cells, when if we just stop littering, we could take a bite out of crime. You're comparing a little old lady who drops a piece of paper on the ground to hardened criminals robbing banks. You're being unreasonable. Me, you are the most irrational legislator I have met since. Senators, I think you two need a timeout. A timeout? What are we, in kindergarten? This is the United States Senate. Are senators above good manners? Now, before we continue this discussion, I want each of you to think of one thing that you like about each other. Oh, for the love of God. I'm waiting. OK. I like your penny loafers. That's a... It's a nice suit. There. Now, is that so difficult? Now, I want you two to go outside and don't come back until you're ready to compromise. Thank you, boys. Mom, it was me. I broke the priceless Ming vase. You, Marsha? Folks, Thomas Jefferson started the Library of Congress. And in that spirit, I'd like to declare a national day of amnesty for all those with overdue books. Dad, I broke the priceless Ming vase. Priceless Ming vase. Thank you. On behalf of the Brady administration, we gratefully accept these lifetime passes to your casino. Mommy. I did it. There's African American Heritage Day, Hispanic Heritage Day, Native American Heritage Day. What about the people who don't know their heritage? They just check other. Other Heritage Day? It's only fair. Dad! I know, I know. The priceless Ming vase. You broke it. Good night, Mr. President. Good night, Mrs. Vice President. Mm. Peter. In a minute, honey. I'm trying to figure out who broke the vase. Don't you see? It was Peter. Of course. He's the only one that didn't confess. I think I need to get a consensus. General? We have to seriously consider the course of action. 
He's right, Mike. Secretary of Education. Well, Mr. President, there are hard lessons to be learned here. Secretary of the Treasury? There could be a financial impact. We must take a stand. There has to be repercussions. It's the American way. No. Let's let Peter punish himself. We'll punish everyone who did confess. If I know Peter, the guilt will get to him and he'll be tortured into coming forward. Any thoughts? Oh, Mike. You know, if everyone's being punished, that probably means no slumber party for Marsha. Well, honey, sometimes being president means you have to make the tough decisions. This is just great. Peter doesn't get punished, but we have to wash the windows. And we didn't even do anything. And Mom and Dad canceled my slumber party. Now I have to uninvite everybody, even Chelsea Clinton and those Bush twins. And everybody knows how much they love parties. This is awful. My life is over. You don't know how bad I feel about this. Hey, miss. Hey, pizza. Oh, oh pizza. Yeah. Oh, pizza. Oh, pizza. Oh, pizza. Gregory, Kevin, Brady. Do you want a piece? Do I ever? Pepperoni, my favorite. <laughs> but Greg, can you think of something to go with that pizza? Oh. You mean like soda pop? <laughs> mm, no. I mean like me. Me, 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 me. The sun never rose until I saw Veronica. The sky wasn't blue till she walked in the room. I never felt this way until I saw Veronica. One smile from her swept away the gloom. Veronica, 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 Veronica. You sound terrible. That's just the way I sing. No, I mean depressed. What's up? Or down, as the case may be. <laughs> well, we're all getting punished, except for Peter, so I'm grounded, and I really wanted to take that groovy Veronica to a flick. Greg, I know just how you feel. You do? You've worked for us for a million years, and you've never gone out at all, except for Sam, and that was just bowling. You thought we were bowling? Trouble. Yeah, no trouble, Peter. It's a reward for not breaking the priceless Ming vase. Yeah. That's why I pulled a few strings and had your junior hockey game moved right here. I've got to leave, but you go ahead and have a fabulous time while your brothers and sisters are being punished. While you're here skating, they're washing all the White House windows. Because they did what you know in your heart of hearts that you didn't do, and you certainly would have told us if you did. But you go ahead and have yourself a guiltless, carefree time. Don't think about them at all. I'm just angry about this highway safety bill. So you get into your car while you're angry, while you're upset, and probably take it out on other motorists. Is that right? Well, yes. Please don't give me a time out. Now, all those in favor of the highway safety measure, please say aye. 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 Guilt trips. The other kids didn't do anything. I just wanted to go to Camp David. David. I can't Peter. stand it anymore. I can't stand it. Don't you feel better? Oh, Peter. Telling the truth is the important thing. Priceless, one-of-a-kind Ming vases can always be replaced. 
What about Camp David? Does he still get to go? All those who think that Peter's been punished enough say, I. I. Gee, thanks, guys. Mm. All right, how's that? Lower. Is that, is that better? A little to the left. Well, is that, uh, wait, is that a good fit? Mm, I can barely feel it. Oh, wait a minute, just, can you, we see, you gotta push the mic, you gotta push the mic down. Yes? Yes, yes, down, down. That'll get the goods up in Brady's. Yeah, you gotta push it down so it can't be okay. seen. Okay. Oh, nice. So, what brought you to Washington? Oh, Greg, I believe I'm doing whatever I can in any way I can for my country. And I think your father's just about the most perfect president. In fact, I think he's about the most perfect man in the world. <laughs> mm -hmm. He's human. He, he has his faults. He has faults, huh? Come closer, Greg. Closer. Closer. <laughs> Why don't you tell me all about them? They're beautiful and, and firm and round. And probably 36 C's, huh? Yeah, not my breasts. Tell me about your father's faults. Can you guys cool it? How are we supposed to watch the movie when you guys are fogging up the windshield? Chad, now that the slumber party is back on, all of Marsha's new friends will come and see what a loser you are. I know, I know. What about honesty, Jen? What does honesty have to do with anything? Why don't you ask your parents to help you cope with your multitude of inadequacies? Yeah, that's exactly what I'll do. Thanks a lot, Abe. Mom, Dad, I need help with my multitude of inadequacies. Now that we've had to postpone the landing of Trailblazer 1 for two days, I've decided to add one more orbit. That way, it can land on Mars on your birthday, honey. Oh, Mike. That's so thoughtful of you. He's always doing little things to surprise me. Uh, be, be that as it may, the previous meteor that hit the Martian surface left a very large crater. Oh, Dad, I have to talk to you. Sweetie, we're right in the middle of discussing the Trailblazer 1 space probe. But it's about my multitude of inadequacies. This is important. Jan, dear, you'll have to wait. The Martian space probe is important, too. Martians, Martians, Martians! It is now 1900 hours, 31 minutes. The chips and dip are in place. The slumber party guests should be arriving in 12 minutes. The Brady girls are showering. Marsha just turned on the water. Excuse me. Scary masks, set. Roger. Creepy rubber snake set. Right here. And so is the itching powder for the sleeping bags. Let's record some ghostly moaning and screaming. Oh, not on that. That's an old tape I found in the attic. Listen. OK, Rosemary. Are you getting this? This is my exact plan for the Watergate break -in. Veronica, 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 Veronica. <laughs> 1933 hours. Catchy song. Jan and Cindy are still deciding what to wear. Marsha sure looks great in those baby dolls. I recommend the onion dip. Yeah, I gotta go. You can go. Just be careful with that thing. Is anybody here who isn't here? You look okay, come on. So what's the deal here? Belly button? Everybody inside. I don't want to know. Huh? Doc? Hot dogs coming through? Yeah! Your hot dogs. Anybody like anything to drink? 
Crystal Geyser? Calistoga. Evian? We just settled for water? Afraid to go into the party, huh? No. Tell her the truth, Abe. When you look like jam, you're afraid to go anywhere. Why don't you ease your way in, Jan? You can't reach the pickle at the bottom of the barrel without a stinking up your hand. Jan Brady, the only thing you have to fear is fear itself. Speak softly, Jan, but carry a big stick. Ask not what your country can do for you, Jan. Ask what you can do for your country. Oh. Give me that! Hey! Perfect! Now I don't have to look like me! I bought the new Marshall Mathers CD. You're an Eminem fan, right? Well, sure, who isn't? But I really don't like the blue ones. Hi, everybody. Hi, Hi Jan. Jan. Don't you notice anything? Your complexion cleared up? <laughs> Isn't this fun? Yeah. They gave me a small sleeping bag. Everybody thinks I'm a baby. They think I tattle all the time. Tattle about what? Like that Peter was supposed to finish all his homework before the hockey game. So he had to hurry to copy all this stuff about how a big meteor hit the Earth and killed all the dinosaurs. That's why no Tyrannosaurus are running around. You mean they're extinct? You said the ST word. So, Marsha. Truth or dare? Dare? Brady's always tell the truth. You have to read us something from your personal private diary. But that's personal and private. You have to. Dear Diary, I went to school today. I ran into Kim Semler. She's the one who wrote that hippopotamus thing underneath the portrait I drew of George Washington. But I was doodling him, not Mrs. Denton. Kim was the one who got me in trouble. She always ruins everything. If I ever get the chance, I'm gonna Here. snap. Read this page. Before I knew it, Desi Arnaz Jr.'s hands were in a personal, private place. Suddenly, I couldn't breathe. I was caught up in the moment. And then I knew. I wanted him. I wanted him more than anyone, since Harvey Klinger, or even my dentist. I knew what I had to do, and so... Oh, girl, it's way too hot. You're starting to make me itch all over. It's itching powder. My brothers must have put it in the sleeping bags. One of the tours was going through the White House, and a girl said she knew you. Uh, Kim Semler? Kim Semler here? Yeah, she said she was a friend of yours. She's no friend. She voted against me. She ice skated. She doodled. Can't something be done about Kim? Not a problem. Not a problem. Kim, it's time. 
Let's go somewhere. No. Come on. No. 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 It's not too late. I'll apologize to Marcia. She really is the best. I should have never seen her in anything. No, Marcia. Oh, Marcia, no, please. Marcia, Take this, move it down. Oh, thank you. Hi. Now, who would I see about bringing down the Brady administration? Well, it appears the honeymoon is over for the Brady presidency as scandals have begun to erupt. An investigating committee is convening to determine just how deep the scandals run. Mr. President, do you recognize this gorgeous woman? Yes, that's Bibi Galini. I designed a cosmetics factory for her. And President Brady, what exactly was the nature of your relationship with Ms. Galini? Well, we were uh, working. Uh, it depends on your definition of the word relationship. And the word was. And the word your. The word nature. And even the word Brady. Are you now, or have you ever been a member of the radical environmental group supporters of Woodland Park. Well... Just answer the question. Oh, Mike. So, Greg, you would agree that the habits of the children reflect the values of the parents? Yes. Then what do you have to say about these? Tommy and me switch jackets. That's how the cigarettes got in my pocket. I swear it. I swear! Your sweet, innocent, perfect Marsha Brady, right? Thank you. You think your parents are responsible for your moral values? Absolutely. Absolutely. Indecent, obscene, tawdry, offensive, erotically charged depictions of you and one Desi Arnaz Jr. Then I made it all up. I didn't think anybody would read it. It was personal and private. I only met him once, and he was a perfect gentleman. Nothing happened. Graham, I swear nothing happened. Nothing happened. You have to believe me. <laughs> no, my mom and dad didn't teach me how to bribe people. I just wrote that Mr. Price was a wonderful teacher, and he gave me a better grade. Was that so wrong? Well, I never won anything before, and I thought I had the most points in the essay anyway. How was I supposed to know the teacher added it up wrong? I'm just a safety monitor. I don't even know what a Moshe is. What's the Fifth Amendment? All I put in it is ground beef, pepper, an egg, and seasoned breadcrumbs. I swear that's all that's in it. The Bradys are just happy all the time. That's all. What's everybody so upset about? So we were dragged through the mud, and everything we ever did was televised like so much dirty laundry. So what? We've had challenges before. Don't you remember how we all had to pull together to build that clubhouse? Do you really think this is any worse? Just that the family has never been brought up on charges in front of a Senate investigating committee before, Mr. Brady. I just don't understand how they found out all those things. Yeah. 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 These are the best pancakes ever had. Mm -hmm. Cindy, is there something you want to tell us? No. Cindy? Did you tell anyone all those things? Just Veronica. Greg, is this the same Veronica who keeps trying to play kissy face with you? Yes, Dad. How much do you know about her? 
Well, she's got the best. Got one. that. Where does she work? I saw an identification card. She works for something called ASPHEF. ASPF. ASPF? ASPF is the secret organization we discussed in the Senate. ASPF stands for Americans for a Society with the power in the hands of an elite few. Greg, you stay away from that girl. And Cindy, look what your tattling did. It almost toppled my entire administration. Daddy, I'm sorry. I'll never, ever tell again. And if I ever do, you can, uh, cut off one of my curls. Oh. That's all right, Cindy. Good. Now, don't we all feel much better? Yeah. 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 Seconds on pancake salad. Love one. <laughs> survive this and then <laughs> I'll be president and you'll be married to me and you'll be first lady mm. Come on. it's not gonna be easy no I know can't be overconfident well, I'm not I'm not I'm just thinking we need, we need something more have you heard anything that could help us out nothing unless of course you count Peter's science homework about a meteor hitting the earth scandalous <laughs> <laughs> meteor Get it, Sal. Try to do your best, and there's always somebody out there trying to bring you down. I know, it's very true, sir. But you just have to dig in and do your job, and if you do that, the job gets done. Like that bill to build those new energy plants, that got done. And Peter's science homework here, which I had to sign. That got done, too. Martian probe data, Mr. President. Oh, thanks. Been waiting for this. Me, too. What is it, Jan? Dad, you have to come with me. Oh, honey, I'm a little busy right now. But you need to see me practice my oral report. If Lincoln were alive today, what would he say? Mom and Alice are waiting. Well, sorry, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Priorities. This will have to wait. That's the way it has to be, then. That's the way it is. Good news? No. Bad news? You remember the time all the kids had the measles and we hired two doctors and paid double? Mm hmm This is worse. Well, Mike, whatever it is, it can't be the end of the world. Mike? Three, two, one. My fellow Americans, before I call the Super Bowl champions, I have some news which we think may very well affect all of us. Oh, my. Now, honey, I've just received a report from NASA which confirms that an enormous meteor is bearing down on the world at incredible velocity. It will hit soon, and when it does, all life on Earth, as we know it, may well come to an unfortunate end. We just go back to Santa Monica. Because Santa Monica will be gone too. This is more serious than I thought. This is a top secret area under the White House where only the president and those with the highest clearance have entry. Oh my. Yeah. We'll just have to make the best of things because things are bad, and that's always the best time to make the best of things. Oh my. No windows. Less work for me. <laughs> Agoraphobia. That's my fear of a meteor hitting a closed-in place with too many people. Oh, Jan. 
All right, I hope you're comfortable in here because you're going to have to stay in here until the emergency is completely passed. Go, come on, come on, come on. Do you expect me and my family to hold up in here while the American people face this problem without their president? No, no, I'm going back. No, 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 I'm sorry, sir. I'm uh, my duty to keep you here, even by force. When those of us topside are gone, we're going to want to know that the president and his family are all right and safe. As wonderful as it might be to vanish with the rest of mankind, this isn't the time to think about ourselves. We have to think about the country. It still doesn't feel right. Come on, let's go, 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 go! Out, 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 out! Protocol. No one, no one else is allowed in here. No one. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. All right. You are, or uh, were, a great American. Everybody, thank the Speaker. No, 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 you don't. Thanks a lot. Jen, what luck! Just what you've been waiting for. Now you never have to worry about facing anybody ever again. We might be in here four score and seven years. This is so weird. It's exactly what happened when all the dinosaurs died. That's right, Peter. History has a way of repeating itself. That's how we can be sure that bad things will keep on happening. Who is this? It's me. Winslow Clark. Oh, Your chief of staff. You know you can't come in here, Winslow. I know that, sir. I just wanted to know if you had everything you needed. Yes, we do. Thanks. Good. It's been nice serving you, sir. For what it's worth, I think you were a great president. Mike. Now, if you excuse me, sir, I'll go up and be clobbered by the meteor with everybody else. Difficult as it may be, I think we should try to look on the bright side. When we leave here, and everybody else is gone, we have the once-in-a-lifetime chance to begin civilization all over again. So, let's try to get a good night's sleep, and everything will look better in the morning. Good night. Good night. Good night, night. Good night, good night, night. Good night. Good night. thinking about Graham and that I might never see him again. I've been thinking about what Dad said about how we'd have to start civilization all over again. I've been thinking about that, too. You know, Marcia, we're not really brother and sister. I can't stand Oh, oh, Mike, the giant meteor smashing into the earth has upset Cindy. There is no meteor. Daddy, I have to tell. There is no meteor? What are you telling us? I know something you don't know. Well, what is it, Cindy? It's okay to tattle if it's that important. Daddy, I was playing under your desk and I saw Thalaster switch the tubes. He took the NASA papers and switched them with Peter's homework. He sent the ones about the meteor to NASA and mixed it all up. He's an Asaf guy. And that's the truth, Cindy? Kitty Carroll saw it too. Mean old Mr. Astor did it. So the world isn't really going to end? Apparently not. And we're not the only ones left? No. Darn it. So we don't have to start our own civilization? No. Isn't that great, honey? Darn it. Trust me, we can all calm down. There is no meteor. There is no emergency. As acting president, you can depend on what I say. This has all just been a terrible mistake, a mistake 
It is courtesy of a president who unfortunately couldn't tell the difference between junior high school homework and a sophisticated aeronautical diagram. And so, my fellow Americans, I say to you, everything's in control. Your government's in control. I'm in control. It's locked from the outside. Maybe we can break the window. Back away from the door. Oh. Oh. Sorry about that, Mr. President. I know it's government property. I'll pardon you later, Alice. Oh, but it's not big enough to crawl through. Maybe Bobby can fit. He'd fit through the window of Sam's meat locker. Oh, yeah. No way. Dad told me never to do anything dangerous. First Cindy, and now you. Would everybody stop listening to me? Come on. So right at this second, the cowardly president has deserted his country in a supposed hour of need. It's time for him to go. Let's say goodbye to Mike Brady and his whole Brady bunch. Just one second, Sal. I say we say goodbye to the speaker who arranged such treachery. <laughs> Would you tell the American people what you just told us? I saw that man take Peter's homework and switch it with some Morris paper. <sighs> she, 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 she didn't. Cindy, are you absolutely sure? I'm absolutely positively sure. She's an ass. You sure you don't believe she's having a fight with this. Arsene may be a little tattletale, but she never lies. How you doing? Nice to see you. I'm just... I... Have you met these guys? Did you touch me? You'll be sorry. I'm... God! Leave me alone! You know who I am? I'll have your job! I'm through with you, you are crossing guard in Pittsburgh! Yeah. You ever been to Pittsburgh? In the winter! Nice tie. I believe the American people have the right to know what really happened. So, here's the story. Bobby was playing in an abandoned warehouse where he really shouldn't have been, but he was. Then he found a lottery ticket, which he shouldn't have taken, but he did. And then one thing led to another, and I became President of the United States.